Hola, mi gente, and welcome to Cuéntame con Sonia Camacho. This short-form podcast features the stories of Latinos from our community, from engineers, business owners, students, and so much more. Each episode will give you a quick boost of motivation and encouragement before starting your day. I'm your host, Sonia Camacho. Thank you for being here. Now let's get into today's episode. Welcome back to Cuéntame con Sonia Camacho. Today, I have a very inspiring guest, Mayra Gaona. Mayra is a first-gen Mexicana who recently obtained a PhD in school psychology from Loyola University in Chicago. On top of her many academic successes, Mayra is a content creator. She started the Instagram page at Becoming a Doctora to share her school experiences while being a low-income Latina daughter of immigrants. She is super impressive and inspirational. And so with that, Mayra, thank you so much for being here. And please share a quick bio about yourself. Sure. So thank you so much, first of all, for the invitation. A little bit about myself, and I, you did share a lot already, but a little bit about myself. I am um, a first-generation student. I recently obtained my PhD in school psychology, um, and actually it was in August um, of this past year. And so I'm, I would say I'm fairly fresh to, to um, obtaining a doctorate. Um, I have practiced uh, mainly in schools, and all of my training is in schools and delivering um, just psychological services and therapy within um, school settings. But right now I am actually completing a postdoc in a university hospital setting. And so that's been a very unique part of my journey. Um, and so, yeah, um, I am uh, also a, a daughter of immigrants. I am uh, a middle child. And so it has been just very interesting to navigate this journey along with my family. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know you were a middle child. That's really cool. So um, I kind of want to get into some of your experiences while being a first gen student. And I'm sure that you and I could talk all day long about some of your accomplishments and everything. But to narrow it down, let's get into how higher education became a reality to you. So let's go to the beginning. Um, were there any experiences that were challenging moments for you where you felt like you were not capable of pursuing higher education? And how did you go about um, obviously like defeating those thoughts? Yeah, so that's actually um, a great question. And I've been doing a lot of reflecting, I think, throughout my journey. And even more so, I think just now right because this has been obviously a dream that became a reality and so I really thought about how you know this all started and I will say and be honest um that I don't think that this is something that I re realized could be a reality or something that I could achieve and so you know when you're a young child and you go to school they always ask you like what do you want to be when you grow up and I do not have any like vivid memories of of being asked that question and then maybe responding to that question. And so I will say I, I grew up in a family where, you know, similar to all other uh, first gen kids of immigrants, we have tunnel vision, right? Like we try to live day by day and oftentimes we don't know what lies in the future. And so I will say I lived most of my life that way. And so even when it came time to apply to college, there was very little knowledge I had on sort of what were all these opportunities that, that I would have or what are different things that I could pursue um, for a career. And so, I mean, I went to college because my, my older sister went to college and so it became sort of like a norm. So my sister paved the way in that sense. Um, but then when it came time to decide what I was going to do after college, that was very just very new. No one had done that previously in my family. And so it, that realization that I could go to grad school didn't hit me until my last year of undergrad, actually. And that's when we had faculty members in my program that were advising a couple of us and asking us, like, have you considered grad school? And I was like, what is grad school? Like, you mean I could pursue this? And so that was like the first time ever that I really, really thought about that for me. And so I still can't believe it sometimes like that I sort of took a chance, you know, because again, no one in my family had done this and I didn't have anybody in my close community either that I could sort of talk to about this. And it was a chance that I took. And, you know, um, I can say that I've been just fortunate um, to be able to have achieved that 
as a reality for me. That's awesome. And I can totally relate to that as well. Like, you know, grad school was not expected, like really and no higher education was like expected upon me. Um, but then once you get those resources and you really learn about like what you can make your future, if you just take that leap, it's scary, but it's um, it makes a world of a difference, you know? So you briefly touched on it, but I want to talk about what inspired you to go into psychology and specifically school psychology. And if you want to give us like a brief um, explanation of what that is in case some of the listeners may not know it. And I think this will be inspiring because maybe someone is thinking about doing this and they have no idea that it it has its own like major or like field to it. So why don't you go ahead and share a little bit more about that? Sure. So when I was uh, completing my undergrad studies, there was a huge, I think, push for um, clinical psychology. And so that was actually my, tr- most of my training during undergrad was under this uh, major like branch of clinical psychology and so when I started applying to programs that's when there was this realization of oh there's other like branches of psychology other than clinical uh, psychology programs and I will say um, you know in this time right now that I have with you in this space that I wish that programs did a better job um, undergrad programs did a better job of preparing their students for the for just a breadth of um, careers that you can pursue in psychology. And so, again, this is knowledge that I didn't have when I was younger, um, when I was in my undergrad studies even. Um, and so, like, I, I learned about a lot of these fields, I think, a little bit later on. But, I mean, going back a little bit, I feel like um, psychology is something that always was very easy for me to learn. Like, I remember taking intro to psych in college and it was just so easy for me. And I was like, this is so interesting. And then once I started taking more courses, I realized sort of the need right in our communities for um, mental health services, and particularly, um, like psychologists, right of, of color, because I think a lot of times it's all it's, um, there's obviously a lot of issues right in our community with mental health. First is like the stigma that exists right around it. And then it's just the fact that there's not a lot of people who can provide culturally competent services, right? Or culturally relevant services. And on top of that, maybe the person doesn't look like you, right? Like this field is very white. And so those factors, I think, in combination really led me to want to pursue psychology first of all. And so from then on, I was very interested in like um, doing my own research. I did research during undergrad. Um, and I think that really supported me when I started looking at graduate programs. And like I said, I actually learned about school psychology and other branches of psychology until I started like applying to, to grad programs. And I started really realizing some of the differences and um, school psychology in a nutshell, I would say it's a nice intersection. It falls uh, within the intersection of psychology and education. And so um, we, like I said, as school psychologists, most of us provide services within the school. So we do things like assessment, counseling. Uh, we consult with teachers and school administrators. We do, um, we advocate for systems change. Um, so those are just some of the things that we do, but we do so, so much more. Um, and, you know, just a shout out to my fellow school psychologists. Um, but yeah, so that's a little bit about school psychology. And like I said, um, we support, uh, students in being able to, um, learn, right. Learn and succeed in the school setting. And I can really relate on what you said about how you wish you knew there were more fields within the broad field of psychology. I feel that same way in computer science. Like I was already like, almost done with my undergrad and I started realizing like, oh, there's other avenues that actually really interest me and and things like that. So I feel like it's super inspiring and hopefully some of the listeners, this encourages you to go whatever field you're interested in, really go explore what opportunities there are because it's not just black and white. There's not just like one way to do something. Like there are so many different avenues that are just waiting to be explored. So With that, I do want to have you end the episode with any advice that you wish you knew before going into your higher education journey um, and just any words of wisdom that you have to share with the audience. Sure. And so this is always the hardest question for me, but I would say one of the biggest tips that I have is 
to not be afraid, right, to utilize resources like social media now, I think is a very powerful tool. And we have advanced so much in just the the degree to we can to which we can seek out additional support, right? And what I mean by that is that maybe in my time, right, when I was applying to graduate programs, like there wasn't a lot of these pages, right? Like there is nowadays or ways to to reach out to certain people, right? To seek out mentors, um, outside mentors, outside of your schools and your programs, but there is much more now. And so I would encourage you all not to be afraid to seek out for um, resources outside of your program, to to seek out additional mentors outside of your program. Um, even myself, like as a, um, you know, as a graduate student who recently graduated, I will say that a lot of things like even searching for jobs and like obtaining my current position, like I had to reach out um, outside of my program. I had to reach out to folks outside of my program. And that is how we move forward, right? Like reaching out and networking, um, not being afraid to do that. I think once you do it the first time, it gets easier with time. And so I do want, want to encourage our, um, any fellow first gens out there um, to do that. Yeah, that's such great advice. Just kind of like we said earlier, like taking that initial leap is the scariest part but once you're in it it's you know it's not as bad as you think um and you can really like just change your whole career and your whole life after that so thank you so much um for sharing all of your great insight i will have all of Maida's socials linked on this episode thank you again and i will see you guys in the next episode follow the podcast on all social platforms at cuentame con sonia camacho listen to us on spotify apple music and youtube Want to be featured in a future episode? Email cuentame.sonia at gmail.com. Thank you to our equipment sponsor, Sure.